G'day viewers, Retro Man here. Today it's all about the sword and sorcery genre in the 80s and I will be rediscovering gore from 1987. Stay tuned for more. Coming to you from a basement studio somewhere down under, it's the 80s show with Australia's Retro Man. On tonight's show, Retro Man does a retrospective on Gore, a sword and sorcery film from the Canon catalogue. Well, what are we waiting for? Lights, camera, Retro Man! G'day viewers, Retro Man here and welcome to The 80s Show. And today I'm going to be talking about this little film from Canon Films that kind of came out at the end of the sword and sorcery boom called Gore. Now this film called Gore, what a title, Gore, you expect that there's loads of it on the screen? Well it's not that gory, I mean the sword fighting in it's pretty campy. But anyway guys, Gore is this, uh, it's not a title character, it's not a beast master. You know, that Beastmaster which came in the wake of Conan, which had Mark Singer and Tanya Roberts. That wasn't a bad little film. But it's not the title character like the Beastmaster. Gore is actually this mythical land. And I tell you what, this is an oddball film. I mean, it was kind of based on the philosophy professor John Norman's book series, uh, Canon somehow got on that idea that they wanted to do film versions of Gore. And the lead character of Gore is a guy called Tal. And Tal is this American professor at a college and somehow he gets his hands on this magical ring and has a bit of a car accident and then he lands in the mythical land of Gore. And he goes on this bit of a sword and sorcery adventure. Gore is kind of this oppressed country and the ruler is Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed, whose final film was Gladiator. But back in the 80s, he hit a bit of a rough patch and he was appearing in low-budget fare like Gore. And uh, he's kind of this ruler of this land. And uh, his uh, people don't like what he's doing. He's a bit of a bad guy. And uh, this Tal kind of uh, stumbles into this problem in this land. And uh, it's a fantasy film, guys, and uh, it's full of sword and sorcery and action, and uh, a lot of it's really campy. And uh, there's this great-looking girl in this one called Rebecca Ferrati. Now, uh, she certainly has a presence. She was a bit of a model, a playboy girl in the 80s, and uh, she was also in rock music videos. And she was also in Beverly Hills Cop 2 uh, when uh, Eddie Murphy and the gang go to the, uh, the Playboy uh, mansion, I think it was. And uh, yeah, she's actually in a scene in that as well. Anyway, Rebecca Ferrati plays this sword-wielding woman in the kind of the same vein as Sandel Bergman in the Conan films. And uh, her and Tal are on this adventure against Oliver Reed. And uh, he's the big ruler of the land. And uh, it's amazing when you find that actors like Oliver Reed wound up in stuff like this and... Uh, it's just kind of interesting. Tal is actually played by an Italian actor called Ur Urbano, Urbano, Barbarelli, Barberini, Barberelli, Barberini, I think. Uh, he's got this Italian sounding name because he's an Italian actor that they somehow put in this film. And you know, at the start of the film, he's this buttoned up college professor. And then as he enters this mystical land, he's this buff hero. Well, he becomes one anyway. So we've got Rebecca Ferrati and we've got Tal played by this Italian actor, Urbano Barberini. And these two are in this mythical land trying to bring down Oliver Reed. And it's a real campy, sword and sorcery film. There's a bit of fantasy in there. And uh, amazingly, not only do we get Oliver Reed, but Jack 
Paul Ants is on the billing. You know, that guy, he plays a great villain, usually in films, and he's kind of a villain here too. And uh, the film kind of culminates where they take on Oliver Reed and uh, Urbano, or Tal, if you will, is shooting arrows. And spoiler alert, he shoots this arrow and it kind of gets Oliver Reed in the neck and uh, Oliver Reed's down for the count. That's his demise at the end of the film. So all it took was one arrow. Actually, he shot maybe a couple before that, but it was this one fatal arrow that eliminated Oliver Reed from ruling over the land of Gore. And this is a really over-the-top campy film. And if you like that kind of stuff, these sword and sorcery films from the 80s, you may get a kick out of gore. As I said, I watched this the other night on Amazon Prime. And actually, I rented it back in the 80s. And uh, yeah, it was a rental back then. And I thought, mm, I watched it, kind of forgot about it. And all of a sudden, it's on Amazon Prime. So uh, it's kind of fun to relive these things years later. And uh, as I said, uh, Jack Palance pops up at the end and Jack Palance is a force in the subsequent gore film called Outlaw of Gore, which came out this sequel in 1989. And I'm yet to check that one out but uh, I will definitely check that one out and be back to tell you more about it. Actually, I saw it back in the day on the rental shelves with Gore. I did hire it and watch it, and I can't remember it. So it should be a trip watching The Outlaw of Gore. So I'll be back for more Gore very soon. So that's the sword and sorcery genre in the 80s, if you will. And uh, it was a fun time. These films were really populating those video shelves and they were full of action and magic and excitement and uh, tell me what you think of it guys have you seen gore it's not a great film but i mean if you like that sort of stuff you will get a kick out of it so tell me your thoughts and feelings on gore and tell me your thoughts and feelings on the sword and sorcery genre in general but if you want a little bit of a nostalgic romp back to the 80s, definitely check out Gore on Amazon Prime. It's a 1987 film and uh, it certainly feels like it. It was a different time and place. And the funny thing about it is, you know those Lou Ferrigno canon films from the 80s? Well, Gore kind of uses the theme tune. It recycles it. And uh, yeah, it was a great theme music but uh, there's also some use of music from that other canon film, The Barbarians, which featured the Barbarian Brothers uh, in the titular role. And that was an interesting sword and sorcery film from the 80s as well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure talking about gore. And I will return with a little bit about Outlaw of Gore, that sequel. But until then, guys, like, comment and subscribe. And keep watching the 80s show because you will never know what is going to pop up next because the 80s show is the ultimate nostalgia kick. Anyway, guys, this is Retro Man living the dream, 80s style. Stay gold. Thanks for watching. Retro Man will return faster than a boomerang and more powerful than Conan the Barbarian. Please subscribe and good night viewers.